In this video, we're going to take a look at another very useful popular class. You've been using it already for a little while, but you really haven't been doing too much with it, and that's the string class. This is my Google search here for strings and what it first popped up. Unfortunately, what we're doing is way better than this. It looks like this. And so this is the Javadocs for class string. Now, string technically isn't a primitive string, uh, variables do point to the memory address of a string. Uh, strings are actually special. You're going to learn a lot about them in the next uh, class or two. But let's see what the string class here has to offer for us. So we've always made it with simple little lines like this. String greeting equals hello. But what we could have done is we could have also gone string greeting to equals new string hello. We're not going to tell you the difference right now. There's a subtle difference. Um, but, you know, this implies it is an object. But there's also this side of it where you can do it without using the new word. Now, that's one little neat thing about strings. The other neat thing about strings is since it is a class, you can expect that there's probably a lot of methods that go along with it. So you can see here that the string class has lots of methods. And so let's get to the methods. There we go. Methods. Tons. Look at this list here. Now, we don't have to go through all the methods and learn them. There's about five or six that are popular and easy to use that we focus on in this course. And a few of them, well, we're just going to go through them here. They're all listed in here. Uh, and if you want, you can always go and look at all the others that are in here. Sometimes you have a useful one that you need to use, right? But just to give you an idea, that this basic string you used to be using, like when I have my string up here called greeting, you were used to just sort of storing a word with it. But I could go greeting dot, just like you do with your other classes, it accesses all the methods that are public in that class. And then you got your big list here, right? Stuff you could do. So you could check some of those ones out. Now, let's actually see what we can do with some of them. I'm going to use this string word. These are the most basic, simple examples just to show you the methods you need to know for the AP exam. So here's the first one. String part equals, hey word, access your substring method and the beginning index, I'm going to make it slot three. And now I'm going to do a little system out of this. System out print line part. Now, substring does what you think it does. It goes into the string and it grabs a subsection of it. When I give it index three, the counting starts at zero. Zero, one, two, three. So it starts at three and it will grab from there onwards to the very end of the string. So when I system this out here, what it should give me is it should give me the nice printout. Now, let me see here. It says I have an error. I'm going to run this anyways, and there it is, from D onwards, right? So that's substring. Now, substring also has another version that we can use. Substring also has this version where I can go part, and I'm just going to use part again there. Hey, Word, give me the substring from 3 to and it says here the end index. So I'm going to keep this really close by. I'm just going to say 6. And then I'm going to system out what it grabs me. And the neat thing, or the not so neat thing here is, um, you'd figure this would grab from character 3 to character 6. But the actual rule, you'll see when I run this, is it actually grabs 3, 4, and five, it does not include six. So when you do the substring here, does not include end index. So it's a bit weird, right? Go up to six, but don't grab it. You just have to memorize it. Whoever made this, that's what they made. Okay. Next one we'll show you here. There's methods to find stuff in your strings. So what I'm going to look for here is I'm going to say integer position equals, hey, word, find me the index of, and let's look for a letter here. Well, I know the letter E is there, so let's put the letter E, and then I'll just do a little system out. 
of position. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it should find it at slot 4. And when I give the run here, there it is, found it at slot 4. Now the neat thing is, is you can look for big chunks. Look for EFGH. Okay, you're not limited to looking for one character. You can put a phrase there with space bars, symbols, anything you want. And when it runs at this time, it still finds that at 4 because, well, that's where it starts. EFGH starts at index position 4 in the string. What happens if I give it something not there? EFGH X. Well, this is not in there. You can probably guess what it's going to return. Anytime a method returns you numbers, if the numbers are going to be 0 or larger and it can't find it, then it sends back the famous negative 1. So this is one way you can check if something is inside of a word. Sends back negative 1, you know it's not in there. So that's index of. Now we're going to show you another thing with index of. I'm going to put the letter A at the end. And I'm going to look for the letter A. Now we know when it looks for the letter A, it's going to find the one right at the front. And that's where it stops. It finds the first one, and then it stops. Well, sometimes you're going to want to look for the letter A, but maybe you want to start your search a little farther on. I'm going to say start searching from character 5. This time, since it starts at character 5, which is the F, it's going to keep searching, and it's going to find that one way at the end there. And when it finds that one, it finds that A in position 16. I'm not going to bother taking the time to count, but we'll trust that's character 16. That's index of. Now, what are some other fun ones we can do? Oh, how could I forget this one? Integer. How many? Hey, word. How long are you? System out. Print line. How many? So basically, this does what you think it does. Now you've learned a few different commands to get the length of things. When it's an array, it's dot length the variable. When it's a string, it's dot length the method. And previously, you saw that in arrays, it's dot size the method. Now those are really the only three we learn, but there's three different ones for the three different types there that you have to know. Okay, so it's dot length the method. When we run this one, 17 long. Okay, and I think it is 17 long. Now, we keep going. And we'll check these last ones out here. There's really only two more I want to do here. And one is comparing a string and what it's equal to. And we've done this one before. Um, when you do if statements, you can say if word dot equals x, y, z is true, you know, do some stuff, system dot out dot print line, it equals. Now we know that giant word up here isn't equal, so it's not going to bother doing it. So maybe I'll say if it's not equal to it. But you do use the equals. You do not use the two equal signs. We'll learn more about that later on. Okay, you have to use the method to check. As you can see here, the dot equal signs works nicely. Whoops, I should have said it doesn't equal. There, that makes a bit more sense. All right, not true. And then I guess one more method. It's not really a method, they call it an operator. It's the plus symbol with strings. You can do stuff like this string. Did I already make stuff up there? No, I think I used stuff a little lower down. String stuff equals ABC. And then you're always free to do stuff like this. Stuff equals stuff plus XYZ. You can add on, and then when we system out, print line stuff, you can see that it just joins it on. So the plus symbol is really good for joining things when you have your strings, right? Just forms one string afterwards. And you can really do as many joins as you want. Hi there, plus stuff, X, Y, Z. And you'll see it just joins all those strings up. So you can start to form things. Now, those are your basic string commands. I guess just for uh, 
just for legal purposes here, I will mention there is one more method, compare to, that we'll talk about separately because it's a bit of a special case, but it's another way to compare strings we'll do later on. Now, you'll see down here I have a couple problems I'm going to solve. Um, next video, I'm going to go through showing you how to do a couple tasks with strings that are sort of common and just show you, well, this stuff is easy when it's just using one method. How do you start to put the methods together in little routines? Thanks for watching.